This video is sponsored by Render Forest. And this thin lens cap is especially good for nature photographers since it doubles as a skipping stone that you can use in lakes and rivers when you're out and about. everyone and welcome to Pal to Tech. Today we're talking about the new TD Artisan 50mm f0.95 prime lens for Fujifilm's X-mount. This lens is actually a new version of their 50mm f0.95 design and it retails for approximately $220. Okay, disclaimer time. TD Artisan did contact me to review this lens. I told them to send a duffel bag filled with unmarked $50 bills and leave it in the glove compartment of my Learjet parked in the Bahamas. Okay, I'm kidding. It was $20 bills. Fine, no bag arrived, okay? No money changed hands. However, the lens did arrive for me to test. TD Artisan did not get any say or input into this video's content, nor did they get to sponsor this video, and they've not yet seen it until now when this video has gone live. I gotta tell you, I was very excited to test out this lens. I absolutely love the TD Artisan 40 millimeter macro. This is a very very unusual looking lens, and you're either gonna love the vintage design aesthetics or you're gonna hate it. I must say that I think it looks terrific paired with a silver model Fujifilm camera. The silver indentations around this lens aren't just for looks. They're recessed enough so that it's designed to aid in the grip while you're turning the focus ring. Now the all metal constructed lens is a 50 millimeter focal length, which is the equivalent full frame of about 75 millimeters. And the closest focus distance is about 50 centimeters a little bit on the far side for my preference. Inside the lens, there are eight elements in six groups. The aperture blades consist of 10 blades and the entire lens weighs in at about 411 grams. The clickable aperture ring adjusts the aperture from f16 all the way wide open to f0.95. And it takes a filter size on top of 58 millimeters. I've got mixed feelings about the screw-on thin lens cap. It's very thin, so much so that I would be worried about what would happen if a gorilla, you know, tightened it too hard and I needed to kind of twist and grip it hard to take the thing off, right? You can see how thin this is and it would be very difficult to get a solid grip on it in order to loosen it up. Still, it does work and this thin lens cap is especially good for nature photographers since it doubles as a skipping stone that you can use in lakes and rivers when you're out and about. Okay, enough about the ergonomics and design. Let's see how it performs. I'll be back with more about this lens right after this message from our sponsor. Before we continue, I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Render Forest. Render Forest is an online design service that provides you with all kinds of helpful graphics, branding, marketing, and even website design tools. You don't need to install any software. Everything you need to create your own designs is in one place that you can easily access online. So what kind of tools are we talking about exactly? Well, they have a huge variety of high quality videos, animations, mock-ups, logos, presentations, social media designs, and more. Even if you have no design experience whatsoever, Render Forest gives you the ability to quickly create professional content for your business within minutes. For example, let's say Gear Iguana wants to start his own YouTube channel. It's all about the gear! But he needs a full-blown animated <laughs> intro first, so he heads over to his account on Render Forest. And Render Forest walks you through the entire process, puts it all together into one awesome Gear Iguana channel intro. These design tools and templates are included in a simple monthly subscription plan. They've agreed to give the Pal Detect channel viewers 20% off, and this offer is valid until August 31st, 2022. We will have a special link provided in the description down below this video. So be sure to check out Render Forest today. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Overall, I found this lens gives your shots an almost dreamlike quality. This is not the lens to get if you're after as much sharpness as possible 
possible. I see its strong points being a budget 50 millimeter lens, giving you subject isolation with a bit more separated out blur from the subject into the background. Have a look at this shot here. You see what I mean at f0.95? Still, you can throw it in f8 and get more depth of field to your shots. But remember that this is a 100% manual focus lens. It does not communicate with the camera whatsoever and shares no EXIF data and has no contact points on the back. The colors are a bit muted and not overly saturated. Taking a look right now at the center of the lens at f0.95, it's definitely on the soft side. And it stays on the soft side as you stop down the lens to f1.1, f1.4, f2, f2.8, and doesn't really achieve center sharpness until about f8. There's a little bit of chromatic aberration that occurs at the wider apertures, but it's definitely gone by the time you get to f5.6 or f8. Let's take a look at corner sharpness. Okay, right here at f0.95, we have blurry corners with definitely some vignetting going on. As I move through f1.1, f1.4, f2, f2.8, f4, f5.6, f8, F16. A number of my shots, especially those taken at f2.8 and wider, are just a bit too soft for my personal liking. Even the sharpest one out of the bunch here, when zoomed in at 200%, is just on the softer side of what I would like. And in many situations, shooting at f0.95 gives you almost that toy camera look. Have a look at this right here, you see that? Here's the background bouquet here. And for my own personal taste, I wasn't a huge fan of the background bokeh. Still, you can get very nice subject isolation depending upon what you're shooting and if you make sure that your lens is wide open to the f0.95 range or even the f1.1 range. And you see that dreamlike quality that I'm talking about. You see that right there? It's a very interesting lens with that type of a look. Now, lens flaring wasn't too much of an issue for me. There's some lens flaring, but far less than other lenses that I've tested, and it was a big deal. Now, from a video shooting perspective, this lens has a nice pull to it, as you can see here. However, I definitely noticed some focus breathing on the lens. I also decided to compare it with the Zhongi Speedmaster 0.95. Probably not a fair comparison because this lens is almost double, if not more than double the price. Now keep in mind the focal lengths are different and you can see side by side at f0.95 that the Speedmaster definitely is sharper in the center and has less of that dreamlike quality that I keep mentioning. Any lens that's a 0.95 wide open aperture with such a narrow depth of field is gonna present a challenge to keep your shots in focus. You see here when I'm focusing at f0.95, look at how little depth of field that I have. Now it gets a little bit better when I go to f1.1 or f1.4, but you really got to ask yourself what you need f0.95 for. It's really a challenge to shoot anything in motion with such a narrow depth of field. And the fact that the camera is not auto focusing, I found it very challenging to get shots in focus at f0.95 on this lens. I found myself putting it into f2 or even f2.8 and then I got more depth of field to work with and it was a bit easier. But then that begs the question, why get a lens that's f0.95 in the first place? TD Artisan is definitely making some wonderful budget lens for Fujifilm cameras. The 40 millimeter macro is becoming, if not already is, my single favorite third-party lens for Fujifilm. If you are on a tight budget and you absolutely need a 50 millimeter lens, this is definitely one to consider. I do think you can get some spectacular nature shots with this lens. This is an extremely well-built lens. It does not have a cheap feel to it. And as far as a third-party lens for Fujifilm, they did their homework. So while this particular focal length and type of look that comes from this lens is not for me, I do look forward to future lenses from TD Artisan. I think they're on the right track with what they're doing with Fujifilm. And I look forward to seeing what additional lenses they're gonna be coming out with in the future. Now, before we go, there's something I gotta take care of. You guessed it, it is that time again to add a brand new Gear Iguana Hall of Fame member to the studio wall. I'd like to give a big special thank you to Francois Gilbert. Francois, thank you so much for your contribution and your support of the channel. It helps us out so much around here.
Well, congratulations, Francois. Your name is now on the studio wall where it will remain just out of frame, <laughs> but it's there forevermore. Once again, thank you so much for supporting the channel. It really helps out. And for the rest of you, if you have not yet checked out Pal to Tech backstage, what are you waiting for? We have so much fun around here, starting with Monday morning coffee time. We also have a private Discord server with filmmakers, photographers, and Fujifilm camera lovers and more. So be sure to check out paldetect.com slash backstage. I hope to see you there. I do recommend that if you're interested in a 50 millimeter budget prime lens for Fujifilm, check out some of the other reviews on this lens, as well as think about the type of photography you're gonna be needing to use this lens for. Well, that wraps it up for this week's video, but next week should be very interesting with the Fujifilm X Summit, and I'm looking very much forward to seeing what comes out of that. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I'm going to be signing off now, but have a wonderful weekend and I will see you in a video next week. Take care.